the reformer's phrase for the quantum version of the Christian life was simuliusus et peccator, which means simultaneously saint and sinner. And Luther's going to say, on the basis of the Bible, that that is the reality. Um, every one of us here, as long as we have breath in our body, are going to... Um, uh, anyone here not sin today? Okay. <laughs> All of us are <laughs> sinners in need of repentance, and we will be as long as we are in this flesh. At the same time, every single one of us, at the very same time, is 100% holy. Remember last week we said when God looks upon us, He doesn't look upon the mistakes and failures and failings of our life. He looks only upon the purity of Jesus, and He declares us acquitted, not guilty for the sake of Jesus. It is a dual existence. Not hey, look at Romans chapter 7, verse 24. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with my mind, I am a slave to the law of God, but with my flesh, I am a slave to the law of sin. And then remember that when Paul wrote this, there was not a break between chapter 7 and chapter 8. It was one big letter that went together. So the big conclusion is actually Romans 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Do you see how Paul, in that, in that one passage, Paul takes us through the conviction of sin, driving us to the mercy of Christ, and then raising us up in the good news of no condemnation? Do you see how he does it all right there? Luther said this is what it means to have a proper grasp of the gospel, that is, of the overwhelming goodness of God, which neither prophet nor apostle nor angel was ever able to fully express, which no heart could adequately, adequately fathom or marvel at. This is the great fire of the love of God for us, whereby the heart and conscience become happy, secure, and content. What is the complaint about salvation by grace alone? What, what is the criticism? People, um, the, the people on the other side of the Reformation um, they spread all kinds of horrible rumors about Luther that the only reason he started this whole deal was that he wanted to, like, you know, lead a hedonistic life. Yeah. And uh, you know, you, you, if you tell people they're saved by grace and they don't have to work for their salvation, they're just going to go crazy. They're going to do anything they want to do, right? Isn't that, isn't that the response? And, uh, and, and so many Christian churches, even if you're, once you're saved, but, but you, better, you better start getting your act together to show that you really are saved, right? The, the general American Protestant scheme of salvation and holiness works like this. You're living your little sinful life down here somewhere, and then, um, then you go to a rally and you give your life to Jesus, okay, right there. And you become a Christian. And the day you meet Jesus, things start to get better. And you start going a little better each day, and then make you quit cussing there, and then quit smoking there, and you quit drinking there, and you're just getting, oh man, you're... You're like Mother Teresa, you know, <laughs> you know. and then, uh, up, 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 then one day you went to the bar, and you dropped down here, okay. And this little interlude of going to the bar is referred to as backsliding. So back, so, and then you backslide, and so what happens is, the, that, so that, but then you repent, and you give your life to Jesus again, and... You, you know, maybe you, maybe you go up faster because you, you already got done with the cursing and the smoking. You just got to work on that drinking a little bit. And then you get, anyway, it's so like that, okay. And, but the whole scheme is that I'm just going to get better and better and better and better. And, and until one day, you're, you're good enough to go to heaven. Okay, that's the general American Protestant understanding of how it works. Very linear. The Lutheran understanding of the Christian life is very different. Looks like that. <laughs> okay? It's always going to look like that until you get to heaven. Luther said it many times, but he says this. Okay, it is enough to know by the riches of God's glory that we have come to know the Lamb that takes away the sin of the world. No sin will separate us from the Lamb, even though we commit fornication and murder a thousand times a day. Do you think that the purchase price 
that was paid by the redemption of our sins by so great a lamb is too small. Pray boldly, you too are a mighty sinner. Yet the table is set for sinners. You need to be a sinner to qualify for the feast. The only people at the banquet of heaven are forgiven sinners. I don't think uh, getting better is the issue. I don't think we have to worry about that. I'm not saying go out and be a horrible human being. I think the quantum model of the Christian life actually yields better people. The best illustration I've heard about how grace impacts the Christian life and renews our heart, as Luther said, and makes us secure and, con- and, and makes our conscience happy. Um, and it's actually a, an illustration I am borrowing. I heard it, uh, the, where I heard it was from a pastor named Gerald Mann, who for many years was at River Bend Church in Austin. And he talked about a time when he was in seminary and signed up for Hebrew class. And the Hebrew professor at that seminary was notorious. He was the feared professor. He was the guy that everybody was terrified of because he had never given an A to anybody. And so they go into the day one of the class when fear and trembling. And the professor gets up at the front of the desk, at the front of the class at his podium, and holds up his grade book. This is my grade book. And as you know, there has never been an A recorded in this grade book in the history of the school, my, my time at this school. And then he paused. Everybody's shaking, you know. And he said, but this semester is different. This semester, I have given all of you an A even before the semester begins. And he opened it up and showed it to them, and there were their names and their A's recorded all next to their names. And he said, you can't mess it up. You're going to get an A, period. And Dr. Mann said they were so relieved, overjoyed at the gift of the A, they studied Hebrew like nobody in that school had ever studied it. And he said, we learned does learn, we, we learned the language for the love. We learned to love studying Hebrew. It wasn't something we were doing to avoid the bad grade. Now we were doing it, we saw it as a gift, as a reward, and we relished in the study of Hebrew. And then he says this. Did anybody take advantage of it? Sure. He said there are about two people in the class that took advantage of it. And they slid, and they got their A, and they didn't learn Hebrew. And who do they hurt? Themselves themselves. That's how it works. You got an A. 